Welcome to the Vet Dental Show. I'm Brett Beckman. I'm a board-certified veterinary dentist, and we come to you every week on Wednesday to provide the veterinarian and the technician team some actionable things that you can use in your practice. And this episode is going to be a recorded episode that we've done in the past, not a podcast that we've recorded or not the Vet Dental Show, but actually some other information for you that we know you're going to enjoy. So sit back, enjoy, and we'll see you at the end of the podcast. In general, the majority of owners are not going to take recommendations to come back and clean every four to six months uh, to do periodontal procedure, maintenance, to do anything at all with any kind of salvage uh, like uh, guided tissue regeneration or bone grafts, they, they just are not going to do it. The 20% or less that will are your A clients. Those are the people that will do anything that you ask them to do. They, if you tell them to come in on midnight, on New Year's Eve, to get full mouth radiographs and a cohat, they're going to be early. <clears throat> That's the kind of client that makes up that 20% of your best clients that would consider the, uh, doing those procedures if they are multiple uh, for one patient. I am not referring to saving one tooth generally, I'm referring to sa saving several major teeth. <clears throat> those, those clients uh, would be, consider doing that. The other 80% you can't even get them in for rabies only in most cases. And they're only responsible for 20% of the revenue for most practices. So that, that more specifically answers that question about the owners and the compliance. You can expect eight out of 10 people are going to say no at least to bringing the patient back on a frequent interval. And when you think about it, guys, the, 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 Recommendation has always been uh, wrongly, but has been get you get the patient in every every year, and we prevent periodontal disease. That could not be wronger uh, in any stretch. That that one statement. The reason is, and why we get these patients back every three to six months is they don't last a year if they are. If they're a small breed dog, especially under 10 pounds, and we expect to get that patient in every year and prevent periodontal disease, we're barking up the wrong tree for sure. That's not going to happen. What happens is the patient goes in and it gets cleaned, maybe starting at a year of age every year until it's four or five, and then start getting recession, you start getting odor, uh, you start getting other changes. And the owner takes that patient to somebody that has dental radiographs and they have 15 extractions. And the, the patient has had uh, cleaning every year since that period of time. That is extremely common. We see it every day in referral practice. So that's why we recommend in those cases where we have refractory perio that we talked about before, that we get those patients in on a frequent basis to maintain it because otherwise it's not going to happen. So hope that hope that puts that into perspective for you. Bernadette, the uh, good question here, the, the, the cat will not drink the water additive. Well, and that's, that's fairly common uh, as well. And healthy mouth comes in a concentrate. So what you can do is make a 25% concentration originally for, uh, for the patient and then have that uh, increase every week. Healthy mouth, if you find that you have a patient that will not take it even with that, will replace that container uh, if, the, if that owner did not uh, get compliance. They will, if they bought it from you or they bought it from the owner, either one, healthy mouth will replace uh, that container with, a, with another new container. Uh, as far as TDC goes, Coincidentally, uh, Jennifer just got done putting this on the website. Uh, TDC is an esterified fatty acid. It's been shown in multiple studies to be very effective against refractory perio. Uh, it, most of these studies have been in 
uh, animal models for humans. Uh, the other things that we use it for are anything with inflammatory oral disease that is not that does not respond as well as we would like to, or something that, like a refractory perio case, where we want to keep infl inflammation at a minimum. So this is comes in. Uh, you can see it on that on that picture. It comes in that little heart shaped thing, and at the base of the heart shaped thing is a little like nodule or knob there that you can you can undo and then you just use that to press gel or oil onto the mucosa if the patient will allow uh, the the owner to do that you can put it on your finger and rub it inside the mouth as an owner um, if you have a cat with periodontal or with uh, stomatitis uh, you may find it's easier just to put a little bit in the corner of the mouth and not try to go over the surface. Um, and we find that this, from an anecdotal standpoint and an owner response standpoint, helps a lot in these inflammation cases. So we would definitely recommend that as one of the agents that you can use in chronic cases like that. Good question, Christine. Uh, I thought I covered this, but I may not have. For genital hyperplasia, what post-op care do you recommend? Uh, diet and pain management. Um, post-op, it's probably a good idea not to go back to hard food initially. Uh, give it a week. Uh, that tissue, however, is really um, very fibrous tissue. There's not a lot of nerve uh, innervation in that fibrous tissue there, uh, and it actually doesn't bleed much. I know we had another question about bleeding uh, with that. So if we're, if we're going in and we're using our scalpel and we're excising that tissue, then we're coming back with that 12-fluted burr. That 12-fluted burr actually helps to get down into that tissue and really kind of eliminates the bleeding as you go. You should never need to use hemoblock for these. Um, the, the, the 12 fluted burr after excision will take care of all that. Uh, another question that we had along that line before I get to the pain management, touching the tooth with that. You want to be really careful and you want to use magnification, preferably custom head loops, in order to be able to see exactly what you're doing and have a steady hand adjacent to that mucosa and have a very light grip on that handpiece in order to not do any harm to the enamel. If you happen to ding it, uh, you should be able to see it with your, your loops, but you should, not, you should not need to deal with that. Um, if you do ding it, uh, if it's just enamel, uh, you probably are best not to, to do any harm uh, unless you've had some type of training with uh, doing bonding and adenoplasty, uh, things like that. But you just want to be real careful not to not to damage the tooth. Just keep it on the gingiva, and keep it on the marginal gingiva, uh, right where that that gingival tissue normally would be. Sarah, in addition to the proliferation, this patient uh, incisors are displaced. Um, that is really common with boxers. Um, hyperplasia or not, if you look at your boxers, um, many of them have displaced tissue and um, they, all, they, they all have class three malocclusions. And a lot of times those maxillary teeth are digging into the floor of the oral cavity, sometimes with severe consequences. We had a, ca uh, a, a case uh, with a boxer that came in Last um, last time we were in Atlanta, we should be seeing that case back to recheck next time we're here, that had, had just dug down in and sawed into hyperplastic lower mucosa and had a huge pocket full of severe inflammation and all kinds of debris all the way across the lower mandible. Uh, we cleaned that out. We, we uh, did some reconstruction on that. We extracted the upper teeth and the dog almost immediately was a new dog. And this dog was, I think, nine to 10 years of age. It was at least nine. Uh, Annie can tell you for sure. And that dog is a new dog uh, almost immediately after that and had lived um, all its life with that. So look, look for that in all boxers. <clears throat> the problem is the, the boxers have 
a really huge boat paddle for a tongue. And so you, you know how they're very mobile most of the time. Uh, very happy, but very mobile. You try and look in that mouth, you're not going to be able to see that area unless you literally grab that tongue and move it, which is nearly impossible. So the only time that you'll have probably have an opportunity to really get a good look at that is if the patient's under anesthesia, but take a look at where those incisors, those upper incisors are hitting uh, in order to uh, evaluate that, that lower uh, mandible, make sure there's not a deep groove in there. So um, back to the pain management for the hyperplasia. Uh, generally, we do an NSAID and we do a local. Uh, the NSAID would be more, no more than three or four days. And that's generally all we need uh, for the hyperplasia excision, unless it's something really bad, like I just talked about. And then we would get more heavy handed on that with an opiates and um, also uh, probably gabapentin uh, in addition to uh, using the NSAIDs and the locals. I trust you enjoyed that episode. We enjoyed providing it. If you would, do us a big favor and go to our iTunes page, post a rating and review, and take a picture of that with your cell phone, and then post it on our Facebook page, and we'll send you the Instrument Use Essentials course. If you also look below, there is a link to two live trainings that we do. And one is on radiographic interpretation. The other is on killer tips for quicker extractions. If you have not been to those, register for the one that's coming up next. And the link will be in the show notes on the website, The Vet Dental Show. And we'll get you in and get you a 30-minute, 40-minute overview of those topics that are really insightful and all take home. And then we'll also give you an opportunity to get a great deal and some bonuses on those two courses that are online courses that span uh, five hours and seven hours. So hopefully you enjoyed this episode. Hopefully you'll help us out uh, with the post on our Facebook group. And then as a little extra bonus for you, you've got that link down there. You can register if you haven't been to either one of those and enjoy all of that content uh, that we're going to give you on those two topics. So take care. We'll see you next week.